Welcome to your personal GPS, God's Plan for Salvation series. I'm your host, Lisa Austin. February 17th starts the season of Lent. It's a season where the ideal of Christian life is striving after holiness and pursuing its practice to a higher degree with each passing year. We all need to do penance, to die to sin, and increasingly to live the life of our baptism. The Lenten liturgy is exemplary fitted to enable us to do just that. Lent is a kind of long retreat made by Christians the world over. Just as our Lord retired from the world for 40 days to fast and pray, and then by his teaching and the example of his passion, showed us how we must die to ourselves, the church during this season preaches the death in us of the man of sin. This death will be shown in our soul by the struggle against pride and self-love, by a spirit of prayer and more diligent meditation on the Word of God. It will be shown in our bodies by fasting, abstinence, and mortification of the senses. And lastly, in our whole lives, it will be revealed by a greater detachment from the pleasures and good of this world leading to the greater generosity of almsgiving and abstinence from worldly amusements. Lent is made up of two parts. Did you know that? The first begins on Ash Wednesday, called in the liturgy, the beginning of the fasting days, and ends on Saturday before Passion Sunday. This custom is the relic of an ancient ceremony referred to in the Roman Pontifical. Those Christians who were guilty of grave faults had to undergo public penance. Accordingly, on Ash Wednesday, the bishop used to bless the sackcloth, which was to be worn by the penitents during the holy 40 days. Then, while the faithful were singing the seven penitential psalms, the penitents were expelled from the holy place on account of their sins, just as Adam was driven out of paradise because of his disobedience. They were not allowed to put off their penitential garb or to re-enter the church before Monday, Thursday, after they had earned reconciliation by the long penance of Lent and by the sacramental confession and absolution. The ceremony of the blessing and imposition of ashes as we know it today is a relic of the former practice of public penance, which has undergone a change of emphasis. Originally, it concerned only one category of the faithful. With the loss of its former severity, the ceremony of the blessing and imposition of ashes has come to imply to all, without exception. Since the 11th and 12th century, everyone, congregation and clergy alike, confesses their guilt and undertakes to be converted, and by doing penance to implore the mercy of God Almighty, who always pardons sinners who repent. We should make a point of receiving the ashes in a spirit of humility and penance, that by this powerful sacramental we may be, we may obtain from God the graces implored by the church when she blesses them. The second part consists of the great fortnight, and I'm not talking about the video game. This is the great fortnight known as the Passion Tide. This part is an anticipated development of the sorrowful mystery of the Paschal drama. It considers the interior sufferings of Christ more than the feelings of the penitents and catechumens as we heard in the first part. During this Lent, we should welcome it and observe it with joy in a constant endeavor and hope that we may live a more generous, holier Christian life in closer union 
with the risen Christ. Thank you for listening and watching your personal GPS, God's Plan for Salvation series. If you'd like to hear more interesting thoughts and ideas, go to Magnificat Radio at MagnificatMedia.com. Click the Listen Live button in the upper right-hand corner. Find the link in the description down below. Help us by liking and sharing this video to force the algorithms to push this message out to more people. Thank you for your kindness. We'll see you next time.